Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to build an app which allows a user to input a prompt and through Gen AI, it will generate a set of image based on the prompt. So let's give an image prompt of a Shiba and Corgi hanging out by the beach. And the number of image we want to generate is four. And we'll click generate image. So here we have outputted four very cute photos that is leveraging AI to generate these images for us. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is quickly refer to the open AI documentation. So you can find the open AI documentation by simply Googling open AI documentation and then you can click the first link and then we'll scroll down to image generation. We can see here, this is the image generation endpoint that we'll be using. So we can easily quickly copy this in. Next, we'll go back to Flutterflow and we'll configure the API connection. So go to API cores and then we'll add create API cores. And let's just call this uh, gen AI image. This is going to be a post request and the API URL is what we just uh, copied. Here we need to pass in two headers. So the content type in addition to authorization, which is your, which contains your API key. So we'll simply copy this content type, add header, and we'll add again the authorization bearer and the open API key. In order to get your open API key, you need to firstly create an account um, on OpenAI. Creating an account is free of charge. Um, and on a monthly basis, you get a limited number of API calls with no cost. However, once you exceed the number of API calls, they'll start charging you. Um, so in order to create the API key, you need to enter your billing information, which I've already did. And then you go to um, users and then API keys. Here, you need to generate a new API key. They just, this, let's just call this um, image gen AI. And then remember, this key is only generated once. So just copy it, save it somewhere safe if you plan to use it again. So let's just quickly generate this key and we'll copy it. Next, go back to Flutterflow and instead of this dollar sign open API key, we just paste it here. Next, we'll go to the body. So here, the body, we need to specify the prompts, the number of image we wanna generate and the size. So what we are sending to OpenAI is gonna be a format of JSON, and this is what we'll send. However, in order to, for a user to input what they want to generate, we need to update this. Uh, this is the prompt that OpenAI will receive from the user to generate whatever image the user wants to generate. In addition, let's just also allow the user to select the number of images they want to generate based off the dropdown. In order to do this, we need to create a new variable. So we need two variables. Let's call it one is prompt, and it's gonna be a string with no default value. And a num another variable is called number. It's gonna be type um, integer. So now we can drag the prompt into here and then number into here. What we've created is we will make a post request to this API image generation call with the following JSON body, which contains the prompt in addition to the number of images we plan to generate. So we can actually quickly test this. Um, let's add a call, add this first. Let's go to response and test. Let's call a prompt. Um, a lion eating a cake. The number we want to generate is, let's say, two. Two images we want to generate. Let's test the API call. Voila, two responses that have been generated. Here you can see the URL is this. This is what OpenAI has fed back. 
So here you go, this is the image, a lion eating cupcake. Easy. So now we need to capture this response. So let's just select the, these two um, URLs. So what Flutterflow is really good at is it has recommended the JSON path that represents these two URL responses. So let's just press select it here. So let's just call this URL images response. Um, and we'll just hit save. Now that we have configured the API call, let's go back to our widget tree. So here we want to have a page where the user is able to enter a prompt and the number of images they want to generate. So first let's have a container which will store the inputs we require. So of width infinity and height, whatever the size will be based on the children. I'm going to have a text input. So text input field, let's call it label of be creative and write out what you want to draw. And then another prompt would be a drop down. So this drop down will contain, well, firstly, we're going to wrap it in a column. And then we want to have a drop down of how many images we want to generate. Let's say there's only four options. One, two, three, four. Number of image you want to generate. Let's quickly align this to the left. I won't do too much formatting here because I don't want to spend too much time making it look pretty. Now that's done. We want to output what is generated in this area after we make the API call. Oh yes, we also forgot a button to make the API call itself. Let's call it generate image. So here when the user clicks generate image, it will load. And then once the response is back, it will output the image in the below area. In order to display the image responses, let's create another container. The container will be of width infinity and a height of whatever. And then we want to show a grid view of images. So here, if there's only one image, it will show one. And then if there's four, it will show four, show, it will show four images. So in this grid view, we need to add image. Um, let's just create an image with some padding involved. 10. So let's quickly configure the API call when generate image is pressed. So we can go to actions, add action, and search for API call. And then API call is called gen image. And let's call this um, API result as a variable output. Here, we will add the variables that we need. So the two variables are prompt and number. So the prompt is going to come from our widget states text field and the number is going to come from our widget state drop down. But the problem with the drop down is that it's a text field. So we have to convert this to a, a number. So what we can quickly do is just create a custom function. Let's call it string to int and the input is going to be a, a string and and the output is going to be integer. So let's call this number string. And we can use Copilot to help us write the code. Um, let's just simply write convert, convert num string to integer. And here, Copilot has helped us write a code to convert this number string to an actual integer. So let's just save the function. So here for number, we will use this custom function and the input is going to be widget state drop down and we'll confirm. Cool. Now we actually don't need this conditional action here. So let's just quickly delete this and then go back here. Now let's go back to the grid view. So here we need to generate the dynamic children from the response of the API call. So let's just call this images as a variable name, value to be action output, API result, 
which is what we've called it. And they just call it JSON body, JSON path. And the JSON path we already customized previously, it's gonna be image responses. Press confirm, confirm again. So here, you see how it has generated you know, a few shades, lighter shade, which is basically gonna be the dynamic images from the API call. Now let's select this image and here the image URL is going to be the image items and then no further response. Let's test this to see if it works. So let's write a prompt. So an order eating an orange by sun, sun umbrellas. The number of image you want to generate, let's just say three. Let's click generate image. So it keeps loading and loading because it's making that API call. And here we can see the images are popping up. So the first one, second one, and the third one. So we can see the result of the API call. Um, the user can you know, rewrite the prompt and generate an image again and so forth. We noticed the image generated a bit slow. One way to amend this is to configure the image size in your API call to be smaller. So in the body, we've requested 1024 by 1024. OpenAI can actually generate a small image of 256. So which means a smaller image we can generate. So we can config this to generate a smaller image as well. So let's test this out again. So let's just say um, a lion eating a banana by the sea. The number of image you want to generate is three. We'll click generate image. Here you can see the image is generated much faster because we have reduced the image size. I hope you learned how to build a Flutterflow app that allows users to give any prompt and that prompt will subsequently generate any image through AI. Remember to like, subscribe or comment below if you want to keep seeing contents like this on Flutterflow.